if you open up Outlook and you select the calendar, you should end up on a page that looks something like this. And up here at the top, you see New Teams Meeting. So click on that, then create a title for your meeting. I will call this one Tech Practice. I am required to invite at least one person to my meeting, so I will invite myself. But before I send the invitation, I want to come down to the meeting link and copy it by right clicking and then selecting copy hyperlink and then press send. Now my meeting is listed on my calendar. I'm going to email the meeting link to myself so that I can find it again very easily. And I can paste the meeting link by typing control V. I will add a subject so that this email is easy to find later and press send. I can go back into the calendar and click on my meeting. Here's the Microsoft Teams link. And even though it gives a date and a time, I can actually click on the link and go into the meeting anytime I want. But if I scroll down further, I will find meeting options. And this allows me to edit the settings of my meeting. I can choose who can bypass the lobby. Keep in mind that students that are using their district emails will count as people in my organization. So if you want to keep students from being able to enter the lobby without permission, you will want to select only me. For who can present, it works well to select only me. You can change who can present at any time during your meeting. Save to keep these changes. Let's go over the basics of Teams. Okay, number one, uh, we'll start here. This is showing you the participants if I click on this. So in this meeting, it has me, I'm the organizer. It will also show who else had been invited to the meeting. This person was invited to the meeting but has not yet come into the meeting. And here's what it looks like if the attendee is actually in the meeting. And if I click on the participant's name, I will be given options. You'll see the three dots, click on the three dots, I can mute this participant. In fact, anybody can mute anybody. And anybody can unmute themselves. Um, so technically, students can mute you. Um, <laughs> which is like a student's dream come true. Uh, I can pin the participant, which means that their picture will always be visible on the screen for me. It does not mean it's visible for anyone else. Kind of like a speaker view in Zoom. I can make somebody a presenter. If I make this person a presenter, change who can present, yes, change. And then I say, oops, you know what, change my mind. So I can go back and make them an attendee again. Yes. And lastly, I can remove someone from a meeting. Um, if I were to remove somebody from a meeting, they have the ability to come back. Um, they might have to wait in the lobby if that's what their permissions are. I can click on show conversation. This shows the chat. No chat has happened yet. Please know anything that happens in the chat is only visible to those who are already in the meeting. So if I show up late to a meeting, I won't see any of the chat from before I was there. So if you put directions in the chat, people entering won't actually see those directions. I'm gonna say hello and click send. I can also choose an emoji. Mm, cheese. And then send that. Oh my goodness, I can do so many things. I can attach a file. I can put in a GIF. So lots of options for chat. Oh my gosh, hold the presses. I just found out that there is a way to block somebody from the chat conversation temporarily. They can still 
see the chat history, but they can't make comments at that moment. This could come in handy. It's kind of an advanced feature, so I'm going to put it at the end of this video. You can raise your hand. And if I go back here to the participants, it shows me who's raising their hand. There I am raising my hand. My hand will stay raised until I unraise it. I have to click on the hand again to lower your hand. Otherwise, it will just stay up forever and confuse everybody. Here's for breakout rooms. I'm not going to go into those now. That is an advanced setting. Let's go over here. I can turn my camera off and it will just have my default picture. I can turn it back on. I can mute myself or unmute myself. You're listening to me on my external microphone right now, so that's why you're, you can still hear me even though I am muted on this. And you can share content. And if I click on share content to share my desktop, a window, PowerPoint, whiteboard, that's, I would also consider a more advanced feature. I can show that in another video. To remove this screen, I just have to click up here on the share again, and it goes away. More actions. Here's where the fun starts, the three dots. Let me just go into the most important of these. So right now we're in gallery. You will have the choice of clicking on large gallery. However, you have to have more than nine people in the meeting with their cameras on to enable that. If it's nine or less, it can show everyone in gallery mode. It's not going to go to large gallery. When you click on together mode, it shows everybody who has their camera on as if they're in an auditorium or a lecture hall. Apply background effects is a fun one. If I click on this, it gives me choices and I can preview it. I could be like, wow, I want to be in, be in a school. Let's preview that. There I am. Oh, you can see it down here. Here's me. I'm in this school. Oh, my, my hands are creating. <laughs> it's not perfect. Um, this is one I like. Blur. That's a fun one. Anyway, there's lots of choices. You can be anywhere you want to be, which is fantastic. Or you can go back to just your own setting. And if I go back here to more actions, I can turn on live captions. I can start a recording here. If I do that, it will alert everyone in the meeting that recording is happening and including any new people arriving. Now, if I want closed captioning to appear in my video recording of my meeting, I have to enable it first. I love experimenting. So if I go to more actions, the three dots, and I say, turn on live captions. So from then on, you will see the captions on the screen. That way you know that the captioning is working. And then I'll go up here, more actions, start recording. And this notification will come up. It will come up for everyone who's in the meeting, and it will also come up for anyone joining the meeting so that everybody is aware that the meeting is being recorded. Yeah, that's, up, that's about it. Now, when I end the meeting, I can say leave. I can also click on this arrow and I can leave or end the meeting. And this is a way of booting everybody out of the meeting. So if I want to just leave and let all the other participants stay, I would say leave. If I want it to be that the meeting ends and nobody stays behind, I will say end meeting. End the meeting. You'll end the meeting for everyone. Yes. Okay, so let's imagine that you are in a Teams meeting. Let's say for whatever reason this person is posting comments um, and you would like to disable their ability to make comments. Unfortunately, you cannot delete the comment, but what you can do is to go into your Teams app, which not in the meeting itself. Here's the meeting itself. So if I go over here, here's the Teams app and I click on that meeting, I want to be in chat, it will show me the chat right here. If I click up here, I will see the participants. If I hover on their name, I will see an X and it says remove. That is not removing them from the meeting, it is removing them from the chat. So let's say this person here was the one making the hurtful inappropriate comment. I would just click the X, 
Remove Laura S. from the conversation. They'll still have access to the chat history, so they'll still be able to view chat. They won't be allowed to comment. Remove. Now, the next time that that person comes back into the meeting, chat will automatically be enabled again. So now if I click on the participants again, I will see that that person is no longer listed as a chat participant. And now I can go back to my meeting. If I want to send a private message to somebody, if I hover over their icon, you'll see this little chat box. If I click on that, this comment will go directly to that person. So I've sent it to this person and it is not visible to the whole group. Rather than calling somebody out in front of the whole group, it's a way to communicate with them privately. Alexa, dance break. <laughs>